Hello guys, I'm Vet to Tech, and this is a video on the 1101A plus exam. Now, to preface myself a little bit, I am a United States Army soldier. I spent four years active duty. I am now in the Army Reserves. My MOS in the Army is a 25 uniform. We mostly deal with radios, but we sometimes deal with computer-related things. So my the extent of my prior knowledge to studying for the exam was I had a, quite a bit of um, IT knowledge uh, coming from a gaming background. I spent a lot of time um, fixing my own computer, building computers. As gamers, we want to have the, the best components to run the best games. So I'm coming from a background that I do have prior IT knowledge. So take what I say with a grain of salt. If you have no IT knowledge or if you have more IT knowledge than me, it could take it can make things faster or slower in, uh, in the plan that you're studying for the, uh, the certification. Now I'll go over the preparation, the studying that I did for um, the exam. Um, I had two biggest resources that I think were the ultimate um, reason, um, like the main reason that I passed the exam. These two components, and I think anyone can uh, pass the exam um, if you complete these two things. Now first is watching the Professor Messer um, 1101 playlist on YouTube. Now if you've gone on any video, if you've gone on any Reddit page relating to how to study for the, the A plus exam, you can almost always see someone recommending Professor Messer. And it makes sense because he has a playlist that goes over every single objective that can be on the exam. Now, his videos aren't the most detailed. His videos um, do go into depth a lot about the topics. They don't go super into depth. They're not an hour long on each topic. So I recommend watching his playlist as the first thing that you do because it enables you to take in all the concepts. It enables you to learn the terminology that you use in the IT realm. Um, it enables you to be uh, uh, see pictures uh, that are represented like what does a hard drive look like what does a motherboard look like he shows pictures for everything so it's a nice starting foundation to ingest a bunch of knowledge wherever you're coming from whether you're um, new to IT or not new to IT um, you can learn a bunch just watching his playlist now I think his playlist is around 11 hours long just for the 1101 exam so you want to be able to spread this out throughout the day. Maybe you're riding uh, your commute to work. Um, maybe you're at the gym just listening to it. Maybe uh, you're, um, you're you're on your phone just doing nothing. Uh, put on one of his videos and, and, and watch the playlist. Because um, those 11 hours can go quick if you find time within the day to actually watch content. Now, the second reason um, why I think I passed the test, um, the second component, which I think was probably the biggest reason why I was able to pass the A plus exam, uh, the 1101 exam specifically, um, was the Jason Dion practice tests. Now, the his practice tests are on Udemy. You can get them on sale many times. Now, I wouldn't recommend buying the practice tests when they're not on sale. I think you can find them on sale pretty regularly. Um, they're an absurd price if you don't buy them on sale. I think I spent tw around $20. I'll put it um, up on the video screen to see how much I spent for it. Um, and I think those were the main reason why I passed. The, the way that I used them to study was I would take the practice exam and then I would go over the practice exam questions that I got wrong. I would I would even go over the questions that I got right. Um, maybe that I didn't really know the topic. I just accidentally got them right. So I would take a practice exam and then go over all the details. And th what I love about the practice exams is they tell you the reason why the answer you chose was right or wrong. It will give you reasoning for each answer as to why it was right or wrong. Um, so even just going over the practice tests, I think is enough studying material to learn everything. If you go over all six practice tests and you go over um, all the questions that you got wrong and right, I think that is one of the most beneficial things you can do to study for this exam. The, um, the way I would do it is, it would take me about an hour 
to complete one exam, just taking the test. And then it would take me a, maybe another two, two hours to go over the test. So it, it is a very lengthy process. And that's just for one practice test. There's six of these. So you want to be able to spread out your time evenly, uh, making sure you're allotting enough time to this because I think this strategy is the one that worked for me and I think it can work for other people as well. Now I have two quick tips that I think will help you on the exam um, because they very much helped me. One thing that I didn't know would be on the exam that much were motherboard beep codes. I had a few questions regarding that, so I would study that and make sure you know them, how many um, beeps and what the code means. I would then study printers. Now. In IT, in a real setting, you don't really deal with printers that much. More often than not, they're gonna be contracted out. You, you'll turn them in to repair or someone will come in to repair them for you in your company. Um, but for some reason, the exam really goes into depth with printers. And for me personally, I had a decent amount of questions on printers, troubleshooting steps for printers, components of printers, different types of printers. So make sure you get the printers are a big deal. I think they're somewhere in the hardware or somewhere in, in one of the objectives. Printers are a big deal, so make sure you know printers. Another resource that, that helped me a lot was this weird word wall website where I found that lists the port numbers and then lists them to the, the protocol that they use. Um, so I was able to, it's kind of like a fun mini game, so I spent about an hour an hour and a half on that and it was able to cement the, the port numbers into my head to where I could I would know it immediately every time I saw um, the protocol or the port number. So I'll put that as one of the resources in the description below because that helped me so much. I think knowing the port numbers is such a beneficial thing in the test. Um, this test, there's questions asking, okay, maybe I can't go into depth about the questions. But let's just say you really need to know the port numbers. It'll help you really a lot in, during the exam. Now, during the actual exam day, I'd recommend, of course, like everyone says, get a good amount of sleep, hydrate, eat, eat breakfast. I don't know what time of the exam you're doing, but maybe don't be, no, gorge yourself. Just eat enough to, to feel satiated. Um, what I would recommend is I took the test online. And what I didn't realize is that I actually had to mess up my setup a little bit um, to um, to be in line with the proctor's rules. So I used, I think CompTIA uses Piers, Pearson view for all of their proctoring uh, tests. Maybe not. They did for my test. Um, and for some reason, I thought that I could have headphones on. And that <laughs> that kind of screwed me because then I had to reschedule the test because I couldn't have headphones on it became a big deal so what I would recommend is going to the proctor's website reading all the the things that you need to have for your setup if you're taking the test online um, and that you should be able to solve um, if you just show up 30 minutes early to the exam and, and you should be able to square it all away pretty soon even if you're going in person definitely recommend going in earlier going in early can't can't harm you um, you never know what could arise, technical difficulties, something could happen. So you always want to be early, even in person and on the proctored online exam. Another tip during the actual exam is, I read this on Reddit and other YouTube videos that explain this, is that there will be PBQ performance-based questions during your exam and they'll be uh, scheduled towards the beginning of your exam. Now, the tip that I got was to skip them immediately and then go straight to the multiple choice questions. And I think that was one of the most beneficial things I did during my exam. Um, I got done with all the multiple choice questions. I spent a decent amount of time on that. And then I went back and performed uh, the PBQ questions. Um, I think I did pretty well in those. Um, I can't say what they are, of course, but um, they're like performance-based questions. So maybe you have to move, drag and drop, click, some something, um, input, um, on the exam. So it's a, it's a more uh, performance-y type of way to evaluate an answer versus just clicking the multiple choice. So that's what you have to deal with. So I'd make sure you're knowledgeable on each topic so you can actually do a performance-based question um, because you don't know 
what they will be on. One of the big things that I didn't realize would happen during the exam is that I thought I was getting every question wrong. Now, this exam is one of those exams where there's multiple choices, but you kind of have to choose the best one regarding your situa the, the situation of the question. So while I was taking the test, I thought like for sure I'd failed. I was like, I don't know if I'm answering these questions. I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong when I'm inputting these answers. Um, so at the end, um, I'll share my result. I got a 739. So not the best result. Definitely, I think I did decently for how much I studied. I didn't put too much time, but I think a 739 is respectable. It got me enough to pass, so that's all I really care about. So of course, don't take my strategy as an end-all be-all. This is what I did. I had some prior IT knowledge, um, so maybe you might want to supplement with something else. I only got a 739, so I'm not, I'm not, I didn't get a fucking perfect score. So you can't go off everything that I said, but I am proud of that I finished uh, the 1101 exam and I'm trying to share those tips with you. Okay, so in conclusion, the best two tips that I think you could use, the methods that I think you could use is watch the professor master exam and then make sure you complete the Jason Dion practice test and go over them. I think once I was on the, the FLAST practice tests, I was on the initial setup, I was getting 75 to 80% on the initial time of taking the test. Um, on the practice test, he recommends that you get a 90%. And I think that's overkill. I think that's if you want to get like close to a near perfect score, you don't need to be getting 90% um, on his practice test to do well on the actual test. I'm an example of that. I got seven, I got around 75% is what um, I was getting on those practice tests. So if, if you want to gauge where you're at, I would recommend taking those tests. If you're getting around 75%, I'd go ahead and take the test. That's what I did. I, go, I went ahead and take, took it, got a 739, passed. Now I'm on to bigger and better things. I'm on to the 1102 and I'll, I'll be happy to, to, to be looking forward to that. So thank you for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting a video on the 1102 out.